Hi everyone, welcome to Wintelex webinar, an introduction to Azure Data Lake. My name is uh, Josh Lane, so just uh, real briefly about me, just so you have some idea of uh, who will be talking at you for, uh, for the next hour or so. Uh, I'm an architect, a software developer uh, architect at uh, Wintelect, uh, who is sponsoring this webinar. Uh, I do a variety, uh, work with a, a variety of clients doing consulting, training. Uh, I also do some content development work as well, uh, things like this webinar, in fact. Uh, I've worked for almost 20 years as an architect and a developer, mostly with the Microsoft stack, uh, certainly a lot of .NET development, a lot of data-oriented work uh, throughout my career. Uh, certainly within the last several years, I've spent a, an increasing amount of time working on cloud-oriented uh, development software that's deployed in the cloud and, and certainly a lot of data uh, and analytics type work in the cloud. Also have some background with things like uh, Node uh, and certainly I've done my share of, of web development, that sort of thing. Uh, I am a Microsoft Azure MVP, very proud of that. I also happen to run one of the larger uh, Azure meetup groups uh, here in the United States. Um, if you are interested in, uh, in reaching out and asking questions after, after the webinar, uh, if you'd just like to chat about anything that we talk about today, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email at, at my email address that you see on the screen, um, or certainly you can get me on Twitter at JPLANE. Real briefly about Wintelect, the company I work for. Again, we are a boutique software develop, uh, development consulting and training company. We do a variety, we work with a variety of clients around the world on things like modern web development, cloud development, uh, cloud software development, that sort of thing. A lot of architecture and design uh, type work uh, around those technologies. We also do a lot of training, both, uh, both uh, traditional classroom instructor-led training as well as virtual training, online training. We also have a, uh, an, an online only on-demand offering called uh, Wintelect Now, where you can, uh, you can view a variety of uh, videos on a, on a variety of software development topics. Okay, enough of the preamble, let's talk about Data Lake. Before we talk about Azure Data Lake and the product offering there, I thought it would be useful for any of you who maybe aren't, uh, aren't super familiar with the concept of data lakes just to talk about them kind of abstractly first. So just take a second uh, and just talk about that. This definition that I have here on the screen is, it's a, it's a reasonable definition. I, I pulled it from Wikipedia, I think it was uh, a few weeks back. And, and it, you know, the, the basic high points here are this. You, a data lake is a, is a unified data repository. Um, traditionally, or <laughs> traditionally, uh, um, it's certainly not an old technology, so uh, uh, so the traditionally is probably the wrong term. But but uh, when most people think of the term data lake, they're thinking of something which is probably cloud-based um, or certainly something that's running in a very large data center. And so uh, the term that gets tossed around certainly for cloud-oriented or cloud-based data lakes is this notion of hyperscale, uh, and and that's really just a fancy fancy way of saying that uh, uh, from a from a practical standpoint. You, you, you like to think that there really are no limits as to the amount of data that you can put in the data lake. That's the ideal, that's the, that's the vision, is that all of your data that you ever might want to do analysis on top of application logs, server logs, uh, telemetry from IoT devices, what have you, all of that data can be dumped into a single logical repository upon which you can then do further analysis and query and, and generate uh, kind of downstream uh, analysis and, and, and produce that data and, and, and do something interesting with it, within it with, whether it's in a report or in, in a, a further application, that sort of thing. But this notion of hyperscale is very important in that, again, you, from a practical standpoint, you really you don't think of it as having limits. Uh, it, uh, another very important concept is there is no real presupposed schema or format of the data. So everything from binary data uh, JSON data, so, so kind of semi-structured data, and, and even fully formed, fully structured data that might have a schema. Um, any, any of that data is certainly suitable to put into the data lake itself. Now, now obviously, some data is uh, may require additional transformation. 
uh, downstream in sort of a just-in-time basis as you do analytics uh, if you want to do reporting on it, that sort of thing. But that's sort of that, that's part of the data lake uh, uh, product functionality typically. But but from the from the kind of nuts and bolts data storage standpoint, we don't presuppose a schema or presuppose a particular format for the data. So even some of the transform data itself may end up living in the data lake uh, as you transform it downstream. But the ideal is that we can we're able to take the data in its raw form and store it there. One other interesting uh, aspect of data lakes, which isn't on this slide, and I'm going to talk about this. I'll even do a quick demo of it uh, uh, for Azure in, in Azure Data Lake, the capability in Azure Data Lake. But it's something that's not here, but it, it, it's very interesting, is this notion of being able to federate data from an external data source and be able to, to pull that in in, in sort of a just-in-time basis and query on top of that. The, the, uh, on the one hand, it's interesting because you think of a data lake as this, this repository where everything, everything is stored. It, all, it accepts everything and everything goes in there. But from a practical standpoint, whether it's uh, from a security perspective or just some sort of operational uh, impediment, uh, whatever it might be, not all data ultimately can be copied and live in a single large repository. Uh, there just may be political kind of ramifications of that within a large organization where the data sort of needs to live separately and you kind of bring it together on a just-in-time basis. And so in Azure Data Lake anyway, that notion is called federation uh, of data and it's, it's fully supported in, in Azure Data Lake and again, I'll, I'll show you an example of that. So, so that's, that sort of turns uh, the at least Azure Data Lake as, as being not just a physical repository, but also a, a bit of a logical repository as well. Kind of an interesting concept. Not all data lakes certainly have that notion. Okay, so let's uh, let's switch gears. That's that's uh, data lakes in kind of a generic abstract sense. So let's talk about the the Azure Data Lake product offering. There are really three three key areas, um, you know, kind of high level areas you can think of when you uh, start to dive into Azure Data Lake. The first one is the actual physical repository itself, which is known as Azure Data Lake Store, or ADLS for short. This is really, uh, at its heart, it, again, it's a data repository. There's no presupposed schema, pre pre-assumed schema that, or data format, that sort of thing. It, it is hyperscale because it is hosted on Azure. Uh, it, for all practical purposes, it has no uh, upper bound as far as how much data you can put into it. It would take you, you it, would, it, would, it would take you a lot of time and effort to actually uh, get to the point where you had to had to interact with Microsoft and actually get to the point where you 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 might actually be bumping up, up against any practical physical limits. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, you can consider it to be to be unlimited in in scope and size. ADLS is based on uh, uh, the HDFS kind of open source pseudo standard. If you're familiar with uh, HDFS or Hadoop Distributed File System. It's just a uh, uh, kind of a pseudo standard that's used in the Hadoop world uh, for managing kind of a, uh, uh, managing large files in a, in a distributed cluster scenario. And so ADLS is built on top of that. So uh, nothing up your sleeve, uh, fairly standard uh, pro uh, uh, technologies kind of under the covers here um, uh, at use. So that, that's just the kind of the core storage itself, no query at that point. When we want to introduce query and analytics on top of ADLS, which of course we do, otherwise it's just raw data sitting there. Uh, in Azure Data Lake, there are really two main uh, ways that, we, that, that, that you can go about doing analysis of data, that, which is stored in your Data Lake store. Uh, the first at the top you can see is called HD Insight. If you're familiar with uh, uh, the Hadoop uh, big data analysis technologies, in particular the Hortonworks uh, implementation uh, of Hadoop. Uh, HD Insight is built upon Hortonworks uh, Hadoop. And so this is really, you can really think of this as Hadoop as a service. It's, it's uh, big data, Hadoop, the, the, that whole ecosystem. You know, there are a number of technologies there. Spark, HBase, Storm. Uh, if you have any familiarity with at all with that the, the Hadoop big data and analytics ecosystem, then HD Insight will be very, very familiar, very immediately familiar and, and, and useful to you. And so it, it is big data as a service. It's, it's Hadoop as a service. So it's running in the cloud. You're not managing the infrastructure yourself. You, with a handful of button clicks, you can provision a cluster which suits uh, your particular needs. You spin it up, 
you throw jobs at it uh, using technologies and tool, tool uh, uh, skill sets that you may already have uh, if you are familiar with, again, that, that whole Hadoop uh, tool chain. Uh, and then when you're done, you can spin it back down and you're only paying for uh, the, the incremental cost of, of what you're actually using. So that's one, that's one way to do analysis on top of data that you would store in your Azure Data Lake. The third pillar of Azure Data Lake and the other, the other way, the other means kind of that lives in parallel that you can do uh, analysis is using something called Azure Data uh, uh, Analytics, Azure Data Lake Analytics. And Azure Data Lake Analytics is, is sort of uh, exists as in parallel again with HD Insight, but it specifically opts into using a, a different set of technologies. Specifically, it uses a, a new language that Microsoft introduced called USQL. Now the idea of this uh, is that not everybody, when you think about kind of big data and you think about the, the Hadoop infrastructure and the kind of the tr traditional way that, that analytics gets done in, in industry, not everybody of course has the, the skill set needed to be productive in that kind of environment. Certainly plenty of people do and for those who are, then HD Insight is a, is a perfectly uh, valid, uh, acceptable and useful way to go about doing analytics. But if you don't have those skill sets, and you're interested in doing analytics uh, with Azure Data Lake, then an alternative for you is to consider Azure Data Lake, uh, the, the Azure Data Lake Analytics uh, uh, tool set using USQL. USQL, I, I'm, I'd, I'd be waving my hands a little bit saying this, but, but it's, it's for our purposes for the moment, uh, it's, it's, it's easy enough or, or fair enough to say that USQL is a bit of a mismatch between the traditional SQL query language uh, with extensions built on top of it for that essentially use uh, C sharp expression syntax for things like filtering or ordering operations that sort of thing. The idea here, if you take a kind of take a, a, a minor step back for a moment, the idea here is that, that again, not everybody is familiar with the, the traditional Hadoop tool chain and, and has those skill sets. But if you are a, you know, what might be considered a classic .NET developer and, and the, the, the classic Microsoft stack uh, style developer, then things like SQL and C Sharp are going to be uh, relatively comfortable and approachable for you. And so that's where USQL really comes in handy because a lot of the same things you can do with HD Insight and that whole tool chain, you can now do with something like USQL without having to know all those other technologies and without having to invest in, in, all, in, in those skill sets which you may not have. So that's at a, at a 10,000 foot view, that's kind of what's going on there. I'll show you some, in a, in a few minutes, I'll show, show you some examples of uh, what USQL looks like and what it looks like to actually do some querying uh, with, with that part of the tool chain. Um, th strictly speaking, you know, this, this, the, the last bit here on the left-hand side of the slide, these elements sort of live outside of the Azure Data Lake uh, ecosystem, but they're certainly relevant to point out because at the end of the day, we want to, uh, we're not doing data analysis for its own sake. We're obviously surfacing this data in maybe dashboards or mobile analytics, that sort of thing. Maybe we have a, an IoT scenario where we're, we're feeding analytics data into a machine learning algorithm, which is then producing additional insight for us that, that feeds back into, again, into uh, driving uh, an, IO, an IoT uh, type uh, setup uh, that we have uh, in industry, say. So, um, so the, these are, these, these left, this left-hand side uh, just sort of highlights the fact that, again, this, this analysis isn't being done on, you know, kind of on its own and for its own sake. Um, that there is a larger picture here. Um, I, uh, from the standpoint of the uh, other technologies in the Azure ecosystem that integrate well with Azure Data Lake and, and are kind of useful when you start using Azure Data Lake, uh, I have an additional slide on that uh, later in the talk. So we'll, I'll, I'll hold off on, on talking about other Azure integrations until we get to that slide. Okay, just a, a few more kind of nuts and bolts as far as uh, Azure Data Lake itself. Again, just note that it is not only a, a storage uh, platform, but it, al it also provides the analytics on top of it, whether you're, using, you're opting into HD Insight or the Azure Data Lake analytics uh, uh, angle with uh, USQL. Um, it's, it's both of those, storage and analytics together. Another interesting thing to note about this, you know, inevitably you, you, you see a, a new product offering from a company like Microsoft and you think, okay, well, where did this come from? Is this just something that was invented uh, kind of out of thin air? And the answer, interestingly, is no. Uh, Azure Data Lake actually comes from 
uh, a number of real real world experiences that Microsoft had internally over the course of the last several years building things like Skype and Office 365 and a number of other kind of large web properties that they uh, that that they interact with or, or, or have built and generate a lot of data from and ultimately they need to make sense of that data and do analytics on top of that data and so Microsoft in conjunction with their their research uh, arm uh, and some internal teams have, have built a number of internal tools over the last 10 years or so to do those analytics. And the, what you see in Azure Data Lake today is really, uh, really feeds from and builds upon a lot of that internal learning and those internal tools that, that Microsoft uh, and expertise that Microsoft built up. And so they've really just taken that and, and productized it and commercialized it. And now it's something that, that anybody can opt into and use. So kind of an interesting bit uh, about the history of, of Azure Data Lake. Again, the goal here is for you to be able to leverage existing skills and technologies, no, no matter where you, you know, no matter what your background is, where you're coming from, whether you are a traditional, you have a traditional data science background, or uh, or certainly are well versed in things like the Hadoop ecosystem. If if you're there, then you can you can live a perfectly happy life with Azure Data Lake using HD Insight. Uh, at the same time, if you don't have those skills, then you have the the USQL, the USQL uh, tool chain that you can opt into as well. Uh, and and the the last thing I'll note here again, like the like the slide says towards towards the bottom, it, it's certainly the 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 notion of Azure Data Lake, the value proposition with Azure Data Lake. A lot of it really comes from the fact that it is a it is a cloud-based service. It's it's not you're not managing the infrastructure yourself. Uh, several years ago, when when data analytics and big data Became a became a thing, and, and a lot of people started doing it. Obviously, uh, there there were no such thing as initially there were no such thing as kind of hosted managed services for this, and so you ended up having to spin up your own clusters and do a lot of uh, kind of infrastructure handholding, a lot of capital investment, and you had to you had to have experts who uh, infrastructure experts who could build all this stuff and maintain it for you. Um, uh, and that's even before you get to the actual uh, you know, deriving value from all, all of that, that capital expenditure by doing the, the actual analytics. So the nice thing about an Azure hosted or a cloud hosted service is that you don't have that upfront cost. You don't have those big capital investments. You don't have all the maintenance involved in maintaining your own cluster and infrastructure. You literally have a handful of button clicks and you pay for exactly what you use uh, to, do, to do your analysis in the cloud. Uh, nothing more and nothing less, um, which is a really, really uh, power. It, it, it's 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 one of those things that it's easy to say, and and in, in, in a lot of cases we talk about that, but until you really see it and experience it, it's it's actually something. Uh, it's quite marvelous, actually, and something that uh, I, I would predict in 10 years we'll all look back on this this sort of thing and really marvel at at the concept of uh, kind of building your own clusters and spinning all that stuff up and maintaining maintaining all that stuff uh, ourselves, as opposed to uh, renting renting capacity from somebody else, um, kind of an interesting aside. Okay, so uh, I promise I've got a couple of demos here. I'm going to get to momentarily, but uh, but I do want to take because we've got kind of three pillars with uh, with Azure Data Lake. I want to I want to you know I have a couple of or a slide essentially on each of those just so I can drill you know one one slight level uh, deeper so that just so that you have a little bit more of an understanding of kind of what's going on with each of those those three areas. Some of this we've already covered. Uh, like I said, da Data Lake Store is the data re uh, repository. It's physically where the data is actually stored, uh, that, that the data that you actually import into your Data Lake. It is built on HDFS. You can think of it, if you're familiar with HDFS, you can think of it essentially as HDFS as a service. It provides, because it's ho it is cloud hosted, just like we were talking about a moment ago, it provides durable and redundant storage for you, which again is something if you were building your own cluster, if, you were, if you've done, uh, if, you've, if you've maintained and managed your own big data analytics cluster and your own data center uh, previously, then, then you've, had, you've been responsible for that yourself in the past. Uh, and that's fine if you're willing to undertake that, but, but again, one of the value propositions here is that you don't have to you know you don't have to deal with all of that yourself. You don't have to build all that capability yourself. You just get to take advantage of the capability that's already built into uh, Data Lake Store. Uh, a, a bit more about some of the data scenarios that Data Lake Store is optimized for. Uh, again, we've talked about the kind of the hyperscale unlimited capacity angle. Uh, I won't beat that one to the ground further. Uh, but but it's interesting. Um, 
when you when you start thinking about some of the workloads, some of the data that you want to uh, get into Data Lake Store, uh, certainly things like batch uh, batch uh, push or batch import of data is uh, even even large amounts, gigabytes or or you know building up to petabytes even of data uh, is part and parcel and, and fairly standard for something like Data Lake Store. But you also have some other scenarios which are which are increasingly interesting. Uh, IoT scenarios are are, uh, are one that that data lake store is certainly very well tuned for. This this notion of uh, say you have thousands of IoT devices that are all generating uh, telemetry data on a on a regular basis, and you want to push all that data into your data into your your data lake so that you can do analytics on it. So this notion of very high volume, lots of devices frequently pushing small bits of data. Uh, just you know, small, small little uh, incremental bits of telemetry data into uh, uh, Azure Data Lake um, in, a, in a very low latency fashion. So doing it very quickly uh, and very frequently. That Data Lake is actually very well tuned for that sort of behavior. Uh, and again, I'll talk about some of the integration aspects uh, with Azure and some of the other parts of the Azure ecosystem that feed into that and and help make that happen. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But just know that that is a very well supported scenario. It's not the only scenario but it's one of the very well-supported scenarios for Azure Data Lake. Um, and the other thing that I think it's, it's worth noting that, that Data Lake Store is very well-tuned for is this notion of massively parallel queries. So whether you have very complex queries that need to uh, sort of fan out and be, you know, be processed uh, across a number of uh, nodes in, in a compute cluster, or whether you, just, you merely just have lots of concurrent queries, lots of folks trying to, to, to throw queries at your, your Data Lake at the same time, in either of those cases, Data Lake Store is well tuned for that. Uh, again, because you're dealing with a cloud-hosted service that scales, uh, kind of scales on demand, uh, it, it's able to, uh, to to adjust and handle uh, a, a, a variety of workloads. And again, we we've talked about the notion of storing data in its standard format, whether it's uh, or in its raw format, whether it's structured or unstructured. Uh, data Lake Store is it certainly able to handle that. Okay. So let's uh, let's do a let's pop into the Azure portal and I'll just show you I'll give you a, a little brief tour of what it looks like what the what the storage portion of this looks like we'll come back to the the query and analytics portion uh, in a minute um, this isn't uh, probably isn't a super thrilling demo but I've got a I've already pre provisioned a data lake store and a data lake analytics account um, it takes a few minutes and and that's certainly not uh, not at all interesting to just watch that spin up so I've done that ahead of time. Uh, but if I if I drill into my data lake store here, uh, I don't have any data in this yet. So I, the first thing I need to do, of course, is import some data. So I'm going to click on Data Explorer, and I've got some just some folders in here that are kind of populated for me. Um, uh, they're 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 put in there by default when you create your your storage account. So what I really want to do is I want to upload some data. So I'm going to click on Upload. And let's see, go to Data Lake Webinar, and I'm going to upload two files, a post-TSV uh, file and a comments.tsv file. These are tab-separated files. Um, so I'll click Open, and I'm going to add those. And you, you'll see, we'll see some progress here. This data, this is about 100, if I re remember correctly, it's about a, together, it's about 100 megabytes of data uh, that all it's uh, this is actually data. If you're familiar with Stack Overflow, the the website Stack Overflow, um, they ha the Stack Overflow has a number of kind of uh, adjunct sites, uh, and all of their a lot of their data for postings and and upvoting and downvoting of of uh, uh, post answers that sort of thing. That's all open data that you can download uh, freely, uh, and, it, and it has some structure to it that sort of thing. And so it's useful for doing some analytics on it. Um, and so I pulled some of that data from. Uh, I, there's a there's a, a stack a stack overflow or a stack exchange website which is specific for academics the people who are in uh, academia um, to to ask one another questions and so I some of the some of these comments and posts and comments are just pulled from from a a, a prior uh, a prior version or a, a previous month of of uh, usage on that site so I've imported that data here um, I'm all done so it looks like that all, all got imported correctly so let me close this out. We can uh, we can drill into this just to make sure we actually can see some of this data. Um, yeah, so uh, you uh, this just pulls up the first first several uh, several rows of this this data. I'm just showing about 30 or so rows here. Um, you don't see any headers here yet. Again, because we don't have any we don't have any headers in the file, and we do, we certainly don't build any schema ahead of time. Again, like we've talked about with Data Lake, 
uh, we're, we'll apply the schema as we do query, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, but but yeah, just to, just as a real quick sanity check, we can see that we actually do have some data in here. So it looks like I've got so I've got I've got data on posts, and I've got got data on comments on those posts. And you can see there's some things in here for uh, if I want to restrict access to some of this data, or I want to set an expiration date. Like if I if I import data and I want to do analytics on it, but I just I want to make sure that it goes away after a month, something like that. I can set up some of that. Um, so there's not much else to show here. Again, I just wanted to give you a, a kind of a quick tour of what this looked like. We'll come back in a moment and do some some queries as well. So let me let me pop back into PowerPoint and we'll keep going. Okay. Uh, so let's talk real quickly about HD Insight. Uh, I'm not going to do a demo on, on HD Insight, mostly because it's a uh, you know it's a uh, somewhat involved and, and, and it presupposes uh, some skills that that not necessarily everybody on the call is going to have. Um, but I do want to talk about it a little bit just so that you know that it's there. It's a very important part of the Azure Data Lake story. Again, if you if you have the those requisite skill sets. Uh, then, then uh, you know, if for that whole Hadoop uh, tool chain, then this is this is probably the first place you're going to want to start uh, when you if you're interested in working with Azure Data Lake. So again, uh, HD Insight is a it's a cloud scale managed service. It's Hadoop as a service basically built on the, the HortonWorks distribution of Hadoop. It comes with the full complement of the the kind of Apache open source technologies like Spark, Storm, etc. It's it's geared. I mean, it's literally the the uh, the value proposition I can give you for this is literally the value proposition straight from uh, if you if you browse any of the the kind of the Hadoop documentation, it would be pull, I'd be pulling it straight from there. So things like real time stream processing, uh, doing predictive modeling or or interactive style analytics, that sort of thing. Like all of those all of those scenarios are fully supported with HD Insight. The nice thing is, again, because it's a managed service, you're focusing on queries and data. You're not focusing on managing and spinning up infrastructure and and uh, dealing with clusters and something something goes down and you have to replace a VM and you're not dealing with any of that stuff. That's that's one of the key advantages of using a, a hosted service like this. You you pay for what you need, what you use, and you spin it up. You use it when you're done. You can spin it back down. Um, and and certainly that is a that is a very uh, that is a very useful, uh, elegant part of of using of doing big data in the cloud is is not having to deal with uh, certainly not having to pay for a cluster which you which is maybe only sitting there being used part of the time um, but certainly you don't have to maintain it and, and manage it uh, and again we've talked about the the notion of being able to leverage existing skills. Uh, one other uh, note uh, for HD Insight is that HD Insight on uh, uh, on Azure supports both uh, standard Linux clusters, which is certainly very common uh, in in a kind of an on-premise scenario. If you're going to spin up Hadoop, typically that's that's done often. That's done using uh, Linux clusters. But you can also, if if you're more comfortable with uh, with Windows, you can actually run this the same infrastructure on Windows as well. And you you have the they have the choice to kind of opt in to one or the other when you spin up your cluster. Um, and, and it's really it, it comes down to a choice of what, whatever you're most comfortable with. Either one will work perfectly fine. Okay, so that's HD Insight again. I'm not, I'm not going to do a demo of that. I'm gonna, um, I, I want to move forward and talk uh, about uh, Data Lake Analytics and, and do some USQL demos as well. So. As I mentioned, uh, Data Lake Analytics is sort of an adjunct or or a complement to, I guess you could say, uh, HD Insight in that you, if if you're not as familiar with that that ecosystem and and that tool chain, then you have the option to to opt into something like uh, Data Lake Analytics. It's it's certainly not an either or. You can use both if you want to um, and point to the same Data Lake store, uh, and, and that's a perfectly valid uh, means to go as well and means to do analytics uh, in Data Lake. Uh, it's uh, just like HD Insight. The, when you spin up a cluster or spin up a, a data lake analytics uh, environment, it scales dynamically to to, to match your needs. Uh, you spin it up, spin it down. You pay for only what you need. Um, it, it's a it's a very similar style experience. Uh, if anything, data lake analytics is even higher level or, or abstracts further away some of the details of managing a cluster and, and spinning things up. It's the the notion of 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 interacting with analytics is uh, data lake analytics. You, you're creating an account, which I'll show you in a second. And then once you have an account, you configure jobs um, 
the, to, to run analytics jobs to run uh, within your account. Uh, these jobs, those jobs correspond to these USQL queries. Uh, let's see, oh, the, the other thing to note here is that uh, Data Lake Analytics is built on top of Apache Yarn. So if you are familiar with, uh, with the Yarn, uh, again, the, the kind of the Apache Hadoop tool chain and Yarn is kind of a cluster management job scheduling kind of uh, 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 infrastructure, then Data Lake Analytics is built on top of that. And again, you've got support for things like interactive query, real-time streaming queries, uh, machine learning style queries, that sort of thing. Okay, a little bit more about, about USQL. Again, I'll, I'll get to a demo here next, but a little bit more about USQL. Again, you can think of it as kind of a mishmash between SQL and C Sharp, so you're kind of taking the best of both worlds. If you, uh, if you look up in the upper right-hand side, the, the, uh, the screenshot that I've got there on, on line three, you can see a, a bit of uh, USQL there. Select star from customer, where registration date is greater than or equal to, uh, and then you see something which, if you're familiar with C-sharp, looks a lot like uh, a C-sharp expression, which is exactly what it is, date time dot parse. Uh, and so instead of using some sort of cryptic syntax for uh, building up a, a date uh, from a string that you would otherwise have to do in SQL, uh, then you can you, you have a, a bit nicer, uh, more terse syntax that, that's borrowed from C-sharp and .NET. Uh, for build for doing the same. So that's that's one example. There are uh, USQL has a number of capabilities. In fact, there's a really good uh, website, uh, usql.io, uh, which uh, specifies all of the capabilities of USQL and uh, has some tutorials, that sort of thing. Uh, I've got a link for some resources to that website and some others as well uh, at the end of the talk. Um, all by the way, all of these uh, the slides, all these slides will be available. Um, be made available to everybody. Um, I have a GitHub account where uh, all of this stuff will be available for download. Um, if by some chance you miss the email or, or don't get a link to it, uh, shoot me an email um, uh, from the beginning of the talk. Uh, my, my email is jlane at wintelect.com. Just shoot me an email or hit me on Twitter and, and I'll be happy to, to send out the slides. Um, yeah, so USQL has uh, support for things like window functions, which are very useful for time series data. So if you're familiar with the notion of quer querying over, over data in a time series, you, you, have, uh, you have the ability to kind of aggregate uh, uh, data over the, that for all data that's arrived within the last minute or five minutes or within a certain window. Um, it has support for those style operations and things like UDFs, uh, custom user-defined operators, that sort of thing. Um, Generally speaking, when you run a job, when you run a USQL job in Data Lake Analytics, uh, the, 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 the basic format is you will uh, define or you'll find, you'll have some, some data in a named location, whether it's a file or a table, something like that, in your repository, in your Data Lake store. Uh, you, you reference that by name, you apply a schema to it, which again, I'll show you in a second. You, you would transform the, the data that you read from that named location uh, in some sort of pipeline. Maybe you read data from a couple different locations, join, join that data together in some way, uh, transform it in, 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 a, in some sort of a, a pipeline, and then ultimately output the results of, of all of that query, all of that processing, to yet another named location uh, within your data lake repository. And from there, you can do further integration with things like Power BI and other, other tools in the Azure uh, ecosystem to actually consume the results of that processing. So let's take a look at that. I'll actually give you uh, a flavor of, of what some of that stuff to, uh, that I was just talking about looks like. So let's go back to the portal and I'm going to close out my store, Data Lake store, and I'm going to go to my analytics account. My analytics account is linked, I've already, again, I've already created it, I've already linked it to that store that I imported the data to. So I, now I want to run some jobs. I want to run a, a you know, I'll run a simple query first, and then I'll do one that's a little bit more complex. So the first one is just going to be a little simple query. I'm going to uh, pop down into here, and I'll pull that query up so that you don't have to watch me type it. So this is a relatively simple USQL query. I'm basically going to uh, reference. Uh, I have my that post file, so you'll recall. One of the files that I that I, that I, I imported was this post.tsv. I want to query over that data, and so 
again, one of the one of the first things we talked about with Data Lake is that there is no presupposed schema, right? There, we haven't said this is exactly what this data looks like when we imported it. That it's just in raw form. We actually the the idea is that we we impose a schema or we define a schema on kind of a just in time as needed basis when we're going to query it. So we do that now. So the first thing we do is we have to say this is what we this is what we expect that data to look like. So when we, as we do query on it, this is this is what we expect to, to see. So I define a schema here, essentially columns that I expect to see in that in that file, and I'm extracting the data, making it available for further query using an extractor, which is in this case is the is the tab delimited uh, extractor. So once I've specified that, I have a named I have a named reference to that to that extraction, and I'm going now I'm going to do some query over it. I'm going to select the owner ID column from that from that data set and then I'm going to um, since I'm grouping by owner ID I'm going to do some aggregation I'm going to sum across these are comments or uh, sorry these are posts that that are done on that stack exchange site and so each post has a score associated with it which kind of roughly is roughly analogous to how popular or how how widely accepted this particular post was by the community that uses the site so a higher score is better for uh, for any given post. So I want to for ev for every owner I want to group all of their com or all of their posts. I want to get a total cumul cumulative sum of all of their scores for all of their posts. And I also like to just have a count of all of their posts just so I know how many there are. And I'm just going to group them together. So this is USQL. We're doing USQL here, but you can tell if you certainly if you have an ex experience with with SQL uh, 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 SQL queries in Oracle or SQL Server or MySQL or something like that, you can squint your eyes a little bit, and this this looks fa fairly similar to something you you may are already have done. So now we have this we have a named reference or a variable reference to this to this query. So now I want to output this query to another to some someplace else in my in my repository. So I dump it to a, a file called totalscores.csv using, I, I order it by the, the total score, so highest to lowest total score. And uh, I'm using the CSV outputter. So even though I input, I input the data or I, I read the data in using tab delimited format, uh, because that's the raw form the data was in, I'm going to dump it back out as in, in a CSV format. And certainly there are other formatters as well. I'm just using these. So I'll, now I'll submit my job. And Azure will start processing it. Azure Data Lake will start processing it for me. So there's kind of a couple different stages. We have to prepare the query to make sure that it's valid, syntact syntactically valid, all the names that I've referenced are valid, that sort of thing. Um, every 30 seconds or so, so the screen will refresh. I'm going to keep refreshing it on demand or uh, kind of uh, as we go to see if it, it, it uh, speeds up a little bit faster. So we're still preparing the query. We're basically we push the query to our to to the analytics service, and it's kind of behind the scenes uh, uh, going to do all the processing for us again on the on the on the cluster. We're not we, you'll note we haven't actually managed you know managed any clusters. We haven't seen any notion of nodes that sort of thing. Like the the physical the physical cluster itself, the physical processing is actually abstracted from us, and our our view our lens on top of that is just this nice high level view, just the query itself and the data. So we've queued up our, our uh, we, we passed preparation, our, our query is valid, now we're queued up, waiting waiting to go. You can see on the right-hand side, uh, this is sort of the moral equivalent if you're familiar with things like uh, query plans in SQL Server, for instance, or, or uh, Oracle, then this is sort of the moral equivalent of a query plan where we see our, our raw input, how many, how many data uh, rows we ended up with as we did our extraction. You can see we were running and now we're actually finalizing. Um, which is which is basically producing the output. The finalization step is producing the output of our query. So once this is done, refresh. Yep, looks like we're done. We've find, uh, we've produced our output. So if I click on totalscores.csv, this was our output that we that we specified. We can see we'll get kind of a snapshot of the first several rows of our output. So again, we don't have headers in here because we uh, we we're not presupposing any schema or we're not defining any schema ahead of time in our data lake. Again, we'll do that on a just-in-time basis uh, if we use this data for subsequent processing or subse subsequent uh, reporting. Um, but you can see we have uh, an owner ID. We can have our we have our sum of all of the the scores for their posts, and then we have a count of the number of uh, total posts that they did. So that's our output for this simple query. So that's all well and good. That's that's fairly straightforward. 
So let's do something a little bit more interesting, and I'll show you some, uh, you know, show you one of the, the capabilities of, of that makes Azure Data Lake kind of unique. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of these capabilities is, uh, that I've mentioned previously is this notion of federation of data. So again, not all data will necessarily be able to live inside of your data lake. In some cases, you may have data in, in another external SQL Server database or a, a SQL data warehouse, something like that. And for whatever reason, you can't bring it into your, your data lake store, but you still may want to do queries on it. So, uh, so we, you, you have the ability to do, to do that using federated queries in data lake. So I'm going to bring in a complex query here, which again, I've already written. And uh, before I do that, actually, let me back out of here, right, which, yeah, let's do that. Let me show you in Data Explorer, I have, I have created ahead of time, I've created a separate user integration database in my, in my uh, Data Lake Analytics account. And I've imported, I have a se separate SQL Server, this is just, it's just standard SQL Server running in Azure. I have a separate SQL Server database where I've, I've imported one table, I've, I've logically imported or, or federated one table from that SQL Server database into my Data Lake Analytics account. Now that doesn't mean I've copied the data. Basically what I've done is I've established a, a reference to or a pointer to that table so that I can, I, I have a name that I can reference that table with in a query and, my, and that table can, the, the contents of that table can be included uh, as part of a join or something like that uh, in a subsequent query that I might write using that federated table. So again, the data is only pulled in from the table when I execute the query. It's not pulled in ahead of time and sitting and resting inside the data lake itself. That's why it's a federated query and not a, not a kind of an import uh, of the data. So that's that, that's that table right there. I'm going to write a query that actually uses this table. The table, of course, has a schema. Um, what I'm, specifically what I'm going to do, let me pull the, let me pull the script back up. We'll import our complex query. So what this schema do, or uh, what this script does? First of all, we're saying we're going to use that user integration database because we're going to reference our table, that user table, in a moment. So we have the same set of posts that we used in our previous query. So our our, t our table or our tab delimited file. Um, we're, we're, we have the same schema, the same data, and the first thing we want to do is we want to get we want to get a reference to all of the the earliest uh, the the or really the oldest posts that were that were created by owner. So we're grouping by owner again, and we just want the minimum. Here again, you can see uh, you know some some C# -sharp .NET style syntax in our USQL to get the earliest or the the uh, the most recent or or the least recent, I should say, uh, post creation date uh, for the post. So so once we have that, we have owner ID and we have a, a creation date or a, a created date, uh, which is the oldest one by use or by owner. Now that we have those re intermediate results, we want to join that with our federated table. Our federated table uh, can map, will map uh, the owner ID to a display name. So what we really want is we want, instead of the, that cryptic owner ID, which is just an integer value, we'd like a nice friendly name, a username, uh, and then combine that with the, the oldest post date uh, for that particular user. So that's the, that's the data we're really trying to go after here. So, in order to do that, we just have a single select. Uh, we take our previous earliest post data and we select from our user table. So again, this is our federated SQL Server table user, and we're joining against that prior the, the, the data from that prior step, which is the earliest post. And we're joining specifically on the ID in the user table and the owner ID in our post.tsv file. So pretty straightforward. Again, if you've done SQL at all, uh, any, any sort of SQL development at all, this should look relatively familiar. And the last thing we're doing, of course, is we want to take this first post data, we want to dump it to yet another CSV, like a named location. We'll call it first posts. So I'm going to submit this. This again, this will take a this will take a minute or so to process. We'll see the same kind of staged. Uh, stage processing where we're preparing the query, make sure that the, the syntax is valid, uh, then it gets queued for processing and then ultimately gets processed and, and the output generated. So it looks like this one's still, uh, query's still being prepared. Okay, 
So you can see our, our query query plan on the right hand side is a little bit more complex um, because we're taking data, we're essentially taking data from two locations and we're joining it together. Uh, the the federated the federated uh, table that we're joining against kind of appears as an empty file here because strictly speaking it's not a file, it's a it's actually a federated table that we're reaching into. Uh, Azure Data Lake is reaching into it on demand and, and, and reading the data from it. Okay, now we're actually running. This shouldn't take too long at this point. All right, producing our output. Not quite there. There we go. Okay. First post.csv. Okay, so now you can see we've got two columns in here, which is which is what we expected from our query. First column is that name, so a nice friendly name for the for the owner of the post. And then you can see on the on the, the second column, this is a date which is which corresponds to the, the earliest point at which the this the, each each user posted a, a uh, or made a post on that particular Stack Exchange site. So hopefully that this gives you a little bit of a flavor for for kind of what USQL looks like and some of the things you can do with it. There are there are certainly a number of other capabilities I haven't shown here, but this this hof hopefully gives you a bit of an idea of what you can do. The last thing I'd like to show you is some integration uh, between Data Lake uh, Azure Data Lake and some of the other uh, elements or technologies within the kind of Azure and data analytic, Microsoft data analytics uh, ecosystem. And so I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to show you Power BI. So this is Power BI desktop. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with Power BI, uh, Power BI is basically a, it's a reporting and data analytics tool. It allows you to pull in and integrate data from a number of different, a range of different data sources, whether they're you know, an Oracle database, a SQL Server database, a number of different online services you can pull data from. In fact, if I if I uh, if I pull up the, the entire list here, you can see it's quite large. Um, so you can read data from Excel documents, CSV files, uh, various uh, relational databases. The one that I'm particularly interested in, unsurprisingly, is I'll filter on Azure is Azure Data Lake Store. Because now that we've done, we've we've, writ, uh, we've run, executed a couple of USQL queries. Now I actually have some some re, some analytics results here, and I'd like to actually do something with this. So, and, I, and I'd like to surface it and, and actually drill into the data. So I'm going to connect to Azure Data Lake Store. Yes, it's in preview. I know that. So we'll continue. So now I need a, a, a URL for my Data Lake Store account. So switch back to Azure and. Grab. Okay. Grab my URL. Copy paste. All right. So this just gives me kind of a gives me a a bit of an example or, or a bit of a preview of what some of the data some of the data sets are that I can that I can pull in here. I'm going to say load. It'll take a take just a second for some of this data to get pulled in. All right. Now, what I'd like to do is edit my query. I'm specifically interested in. Well, we'll go to that. We'll use that first posts data, the the for them from the complex query that we just uh, just executed. So I'm going to do a couple of things. Again, you'll recall there's no schema. Uh, I've said it several times now. There's no schema defined in Azure Data Lake Store. So uh, I get column one and column two here, which is entirely un uninteresting and, and not not uh, not what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is so I'll just call this name, and the second one we'll call it first post. Okay. I'm going to close and apply. 
All right. So don't worry too much. If you don't know too much about uh, Power BI, don't don't focus too much on the details here. Just kind of get the the high level point that just trying to illustrate that that Azure Data Lake doesn't live on its own. It's not an island unto itself. There are interesting things you can do with the data once you've actually done your analysis. So I'm going to going to create a there we go. I'm going to create a simple little visualization using this data. So let's take the first post. I'm going to drag it into the axis and name. I'm going to drag into value. Okay. So right away, without having to do having done anything else interesting, I've already I can already see that I've got some means to kind of uh, sort through this data. I can see that. First posts are, are kind of grouped uh, initially in buckets by year. So if I want to drill into this further, I can kind of right click on some of these and say expand. I want to expand this view and, and kind of see one level deeper into this view. So instead of just looking at it by year, I can look at it by quarter. So I, I say, oh, well, it appears that um, some of these posts, some of, the, some of the, uh, the, the first posts for a lot of these looks like the uh, the most popular one was the first quarter of 2015. So there were a number of, of new users to that, that Stack Exchange site creating their first post during that particular uh, quarter of 2015. So that might be something that's, that's interesting. If I'm doing analytics or I'm, I'm kind of trying to digest this data, that might tell me something interesting that I might want to follow up on. Like why is it that so many users decided they were going to start uh, uh, using the site on that particular time? Um, and, and that might cor correspond to uh, increased marketing that the site had done, you know, who knows. Uh, but but that's, that's kind of the point of this. Uh, we can keep expanding further and further and see, oh, it looks like not only was it the first quarter of 2015, actually the, the first month, uh, let's see, March of 2014 was actually the highest single month. So I guess uh, that, that one was probably higher than any one given uh, month in 2015. Oh, no, I see now. There's actually more data down here. Well, anyway, you get the point. They're, uh, drilling into Power BI, the details of Power BI wasn't, is, certainly isn't the point here. But just know that there is, uh, that uh, uh, Azure Data Lake does live within a larger ecosystem uh, in, in, inside of Azure and allows you to do some interesting things, both getting data into uh, Azure Data Lake as well as getting some of the, the results of your processing and your analytics out and doing interesting things with it. So real briefly, yeah, we, we've seen we've already seen federated SQL. I demonstrated that a moment ago. Um, you also have the ability to import data uh, using things like Azure Data Factory, which, if you're familiar with uh, uh, some 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 of the on-premises tools for SQL Server for doing data imports, like integration services, uh, Azure Data Factory is, in some sense, uh, uh, integration services in the cloud, uh, and and it, it interacts with and and uh, interfaces very nicely with Azure Data Lake. Uh, Azure Stream Analytics is very useful for, again, getting streaming data into Azure Data Lake. So I highlighted something like that, that IoT scenario where we're, we're pushing a lot of really frequent small changes and updates uh, of data into Azure Data Lake um, very quickly. Um, Stream Analytics is a, is a perfect technology for doing that. We have Power BI, which I just showed you for doing visualization. There are, there are other, certainly other reporting tools and technologies you can use, but the Power BI is a very powerful and useful one. Uh, within the Azure ecosystem, uh, if you want to do, if you need to do data discovery, then there are um, there's things like Azure Data Catalog for publishing the results of your analytics, as well as allowing others within your organization to discover uh, those results. And then certainly from a from a security standpoint, Azure Data Lake in, uh, uh, integrates very nicely with uh, Azure Active Directory, so that you can precisely define uh, who who is able to view your data and interact with your data and do analytics on uh, discrete pieces of your data stored in your repository. Uh, a little bit on pricing. I don't want to beat this one too far into the ground because certainly you can go to, uh, you can go online to the Azure uh, portal and, and look at the pricing calculator and, and kind of get an up-to-date view of this. Um, the main things, I, th I think the main take-home points uh, here are, there's really two. The first is you are obviously paying not only for uh, the storage itself, how much how much storage you need for your data, you're paying you're paying uh, for that. You're also paying for transaction on a, a transactional basis. So how many jobs you actually run, and and, uh, uh, and essentially how how complex those jobs are. Uh, and, and there's there's more details online for how you slice up 
uh, job complexity, the, the, the term that's used is an analytics unit. And that really corresponds roughly to how much CPU and how much RAM is being, uh, is being utilized for any given query. If you have a, a very simple query, like some of the ones that I ran, uh, then, then the, uh, you're, not the, you're not consuming many analytic units uh, per query. If you have very complex queries that are perhaps joining across multiple named uh, data sets and doing a lot of slicing and dicing, then certainly your, your, your query costs can go up a bit. Uh, the, other, the other main thing to note here is that uh, Azure Data Lake is in preview right now, and so the, the prices here reflect a 50% discount over what, they, what Microsoft anticipates charging uh, for, for the service once it's actually fully released. Um, the, the last thing I'll note is HD Insight, the, the, the pricing for HD Insight uh, is, is slightly more complex than Data Lake Store or Data Lake Analytics, pr primarily because there are more knobs to twist as far as uh, configuration. So you get to choose uh, VM size and, and uh, how big your cluster is, how many nodes it has, that sort of thing. And so all of those, you know, the, the surface area there is a bit greater, and therefore the, the pricing complexity is a bit higher. So if you follow that link, um, certainly you can get more information than you ever possibly thought you could uh, on pricing for HD Insight. Last thing I'll note is a, a number of references. Uh, most of these are really the, uh, if you're familiar, if you've done any work with, with Azure at all, um, certainly one of the things that I, I find uh, as an MVP and as someone who does a lot of work uh, on, with Azure services in general, the documentation is very, very good. Uh, and and it, is, it is still the first best source of information for, uh, for anything you're doing, certainly in, in Azure in general, but, but also in Data Lake in particular. So I would highly encourage you, if you're interested in Data Lake and you want to know more, start there with the official Azure documentation. Uh, that is, a, is certainly the, the documentation of record, and that's a good place to go. Uh, I mentioned that usql.io uh, site as a good, good reference for the usql language, uh, and, and I would certainly encourage you to check that out if, if usql is the kind of thing that you want to opt into. Um, and the, the last thing to check out is certainly the, on GitHub, the Azure Data Lake team maintains samples and a number. That's where they update a lot of their documentation. Uh, that's where it's kind of kind of originates from. And so that that GitHub repository actually tends to be a good place to hang out and keep uh, keep an eye on um, if you're looking for kind of the latest and greatest uh, uh, information on Azure Data Lake. Okay, well that concludes uh, the webinar for today. I really appreciate everybody's time, uh, and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, as you explore data lake and data analytics on Azure. If you have any additional questions, we are uh, about out of time, but if you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email uh, or catch me on Twitter online, and, and I'll be happy to, uh, to follow up with you uh, individually. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.